awfully upset if if I'd left it till then. So I'm telling you now the situation I'm in. If you can help me, then I can finish this and meet my promise. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Because this is for all of us. This is for you. I personally, at the end of the day, am not important because what is important is that this has a life beyond me. Because it is ultimately a model, not a a religion, not a, a doctrine, not something that can't be touched or believed or improved. It's a model. It's a model that rebalances us so we know who and what we are, why we're here, and make a difference. Well, we're, the hour's up. Thank you for listening. I hope you found some information useful. Thank you for listening to my, my uh, request at the end there. If you can help, that's great. If you can't understand, look, we're all in the same boat when it comes to money. I know many of you are struggling yourself. But if you know someone, great. Thank you again for listening. Above all, thank you for reading, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. I'm still here, and I'll just see if Terry's there. Are you there, Terry? I'll just see if Terry's there to handle questions. Look, Are you while, all, can you hear me, Frank? Terry, I can hear you. Hello. Oh, there you go. Um, am I coming in loud and clear? I, yep, perfect. Uh, okay, great. All right, well, thank you for that, Frank. We've covered some wonderful topics tonight. And uh, first of all, we'll go ahead and cover some questions on the chat. Um, and as a reminder, if you'll type your questions uh, in chat, uh, after you type in question in all uppercase, and those of you that are on the phone line, press star 8 on your phones, and uh, that will put you in the question queue. All right, Frank, first of all, uh, what do you have to say about the Indiana Supreme Court ruling deciding that no one has a right to resist an illegal invasion, arrest, or seizure? Well, um, that is uh, an example of uh, of the law courts going mad, isn't it? Well, oh. in a sense, it is. Uh, you know, those are but, but, those are decisions being made without most people's knowledge. Yeah, what, what's what's happening is. Um, and I say this, I, you know, I call them all these names under the sun, you know, cowards and everything like that, and I try not to swear when I'm saying it. <laughs> Sometimes it's not easy. Uh, but we are talking about people who are suffering severe mental illness. And what's happening at the moment, and I did say this, and I've said this a few times, that it'll come to a point where the mainstream population, the majority of our neighbours, finally wake up and say, you know what? You've been telling me for years that the legal system's corrupt. I, I now understand what you're saying is true. When your kind of, your cynical neighbour finally comes to you and says, I'm sorry for ribbing you for all those years. I now realise what you said was true. Then you know that the veil is so far lifted that you're measuring these people's control in, in days and weeks. Now, when they are at the desperate fingernail clinging to control level, which I think they're very close to, you will see the courts issue unsustainable, stupid rulings like Indiana. Well, they're uh, they're just outrageous. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, almost backwards than what you would... It just is outrageous, and 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 what we're seeing not just in Indiana. Uh, Paul Paula was on last week, and they've experienced that in Maine. So, a lot of different areas are are dealing with these same types of things. Um, well, they're waking up the they're, make, they're waking up the population. So, think that they're actually by being so outrageous and stupid, they're performing an incredible um, service, which is they're waking up people who otherwise would be passive. 
and it leaves really one missing element. Remember I said about Henry Paulson? It's no good having everyone woken up to realise that the system is corrupt if there's no alternative. Yeah? Yeah. Yep, so the focus we need to be very careful on, which is why I ask people please not to be you know, overly uh, brave on going out there and, and promoting, um, you know, poking the bear in the eye, is we need to focus on the remedy. And the remedy means going onto the websites, finding errors, challenging issues, really giving it the hard test so whatever we're developing as a model is better than the existing system. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, next question. What was the exact event that started the 1260-year prophecy? Excellent. Excellent question. 1260-751. Okay. <clears throat> The, the Pippins, which we know as uh, the Franks, and these were the um, guardians of the Merovingians, the most famous of these being Charles Martel and his sons, and then the grandson being Charlemagne, were the archetype French knights. Charles Martel was excommunicated by the, the head of the Christian church. There was no popes in Rome. Rome was a pagan city at the time. The sons of Charles Martel, as revenge, founded a new church, and they called it the Catholic Church. They founded an argument to say that Rome, in fact, is the origin of Christianity, and they created an entire mythology around that. Now, they justified it because they believed that Constantinople had become thoroughly corrupted. What they created instead was a kingdom of ideas, not history. They claimed that there was a succession of popes. They claimed the position, well, not popes, but vicars. And then uh, Carloman, the eldest son, went to Rome and in 751 had himself crowned the vicar of Christ as Zacharias. And at that point, the concept of Rome being the centre of Christianity was born. And it is 1260 years since that was created and that is one of the key, key prophecies. In fact, it's probably the key prophecy of the Israelites because it is spoken of seven times in seven uh, ways of allegory within the Bible, twice in Daniel and, and uh, five in the book of Revelation. All right, thank you for that, Frank. Very interesting. All right, uh, next question from the chat. Uh, Frank, did you by any chance this week have a chance to go over to the forum to get uh, guest number five question? I, 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 I promised that I would do it, and so I'm in trouble um, for not doing it. I'm sorry I haven't gone across to the forums and done it. So to all that have asked questions, I, I am very sorry. I have been answering emails but um, I please please accept my apology to anyone that's asked questions I will I all will right, go that's... across and I will answer those questions okay all right great thank you Frank um, next question uh, after I file an EDP and then claim title and I give a different amount than what is showed on Acadia PayPal uh, and I'd like to contribute in Australian or Canada dollars. Um, yeah, I set it up After in US dollars. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, that list doesn't look like the same <clears throat> quest, same uh, uh, guest on the chat. First question is: After uh, it's not really continued. So, guest 72, Don, Don Brian, if you'll continue your your question. Um, so can I give a different amount than what is showed on Acadia PayPal and can it be done in Australian and uh, Canadian dollars? Look, if, 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 you, if you're not happy with what's there, and look, I mean, I put amounts there 
um, on the on the thing. I'm sorry if, if someone feels that it's that the amounts listed are too big or they're too small or whatever. I don't think anyone would think they're too small, but if you want to give a different amount, sure. Um, the the uh, the let me call up the uh, it's Ukadia Books is the is the account, and I'll find the number. One second, I'll just bring up the number um, for anyone on the call. Um, if you go and do a search on PayPal for uh, Ukadia Books Proprietary Pty Ltd, then you'll find the uh, account and I won't read out the merchant account ID because it's about 10 letters and it's complicated but if you want to do it then do it manually that way and look I appreciate that and I'm sorry if it's extra effort for someone to go and do it that way but um, thank you for asking and, and thank you for considering so yeah I hope that answers the question okay great yeah I think that helps a lot Frank all right now I've, I've captured the other question here um, from Don, I go to a plea hearing on the 26th, and I don't have a birth certificate to file EDP. Can I plead not guilty and sign uh, the uh, VC, then go to trial, and okay. after, after the filing of the EDP, and then claim title? Okay. Um, if you're going to a plea hearing on the 26th and I'd say this to everybody I know that we've spoken about prayer we've spoken about different different elements I would suggest at the moment given the way the judiciary has shown itself to be that no pieces of paper unless you are dealing with um, if you're dealing for example with Dawn from Montana's material and I hope that we can complete that I know that it's been sent through and thank you to Dawn and to her husband for what they've done and for everyone in Montana for what they've done. We're going to you know, modify it appropriately for the different areas, different countries, but separate to, to property. If people are dealing with criminal matters or going to court at the moment, I definitely, definitely uh, think that you want to avoid just shoving pieces of paper in purely because it won't make a difference. <clears throat> in fact, one would probably validate this from Davenport that in any, any paperwork people are putting in now, it needs to be put in as an exhibit because we've already seen the courts uh, now flat stick, absolutely ignoring anything they can by arguing it's not in the correct form. I mean, it's, it's, it's another excuse for them it's another injury, yes. So um, I really, unless you're 100% on top, you're going to um, fall in a heap potentially going down that road. Instead, uh, if you're facing court in such a short period of time, you have to think very clearly what you know and what you don't know and how to conduct yourself. Um, I would, I would um, never suggest to anyone to plead guilty or not guilty because that is accepting an offer. You are contracting. But the problem you have, Don, is that you are going into the lion's den really having no uh, knowledge yet exactly, I'm presuming based on your question, of how to defend yourself. And um, all I can suggest, suggest to you is that you don't provoke the lions by uh, wearing, you know, a red cape or, or, or sending in pieces of paper which, which challenges them. You can ask, honestly, you can ask honestly. In this situation, <clears throat> I would say, if I was in that situation, I would ask. I'd say, you worship, um, may I ask, uh, may I please ask a question and do it in the most humble and most um, pleadful way and hopefully they'll say yes and they'll say um, you, you worship you know, under, uh, under God um, um, uh, are you under oath for this to help be independent um, as I'm here um, to you know, face up to the matters that are being raised 
or works to that effect. Now, um, if you...